Now at bronze medal race, the second of the potentially three. And they've just rolled away. Dimitriev at the front, already with uh, one victory to his credit. So Peralta with a massive, massive problem here. Well, I uh, mentioned before, I thought uh, both of them looked a little bit lacklustre. Peralta particularly um, didn't look to be sharp or wanted to defend his position. I'm wondering whether he's given himself a good talking to in the break. But he needs to uh, really get emotionally into this if he's going to have any chance at all. Dimitriev has the physical edge for sure. Dimitriev quite happy then to dictate this from the front. A lot of strapping on the leg there, Chris. And sometimes there's just aches and strains that need managing through the competition. Certainly not affecting his form. No, nope. 10.5, I think it was that uh, last round. It was a quick bit of sprinting. Certainly was. On the bottom of the track. Very well, very, very impressive. Peralta's deciding he is going to do something. He's taken the lead, and he was allowed to do so by uh, by the Russian. Yep, it's the bell this time. Now then, can Peralta from the front deny Dmitriev a 2 0 victory for the bronze? Now, no. here comes the challenge from the Russian. Oh, it's far superior. He's right over the top already of the Spaniard, and the run down the finishing straight will give him the bronze. Bronze goes there to Denis Dmitriev of Russia. With a time of 10.4 as well, so it was quick, and so it should be, because he effectively had a lead out there. Looked like you were both on the same team to me. <laughs> awesome power there from the Russian. And that extra distance in the finishing straight really favoured him there. He got the revs up, and once he got that leg speed up to a maximum, he just swept past uh, Peralta from Spain. Was a case of no contest there. Thinking about no contest, is that what we're going to see? I wonder in the uh, second match of the final. Well, I think not. Right. Well, let's see what uh, Robert Forsterman's going to do about trying to beat Botticher in the second race. It should be very, very exciting. Mitchev acknowledges the crowd. Full house. And there is the result for you. So we'll see him a little bit later on on the podium, collecting his bronze medal. Here they are. Botticher has just gone away to the left. And here he is, Forsterman. That's a job walking, actually. Well, <laughs> I was about to say, they might be wearing the same jersey, but there's no problem telling these two apart, really, is there? <laughs> Fella. I know we're going on about it, but he really is He muscular. was at the front of the queue when they were handing out muscles. He certainly yeah. was. Size of the biceps. Jersey bulging. I think he went round twice. Got a second helping. Who wouldn't appreciate a dose of the bagpipes as you build up for the sprint <laughs> final? I just think it's it's setting up a gladiatorial contest, isn't it? And they're rolling up now, and it's the uh, elder statesman Forsterman who's leading off. Yep. Now then, what's he going to do? Here? Maybe not. Sorry. He's lined up higher on the track, so my mistake. Or not. Here comes Botticher. Dramatic music setting up this final. Race two, the men's sprint final. And there is to us is Forsterman. And he's got to win this to take it to a decider. Just wondering how he's going to do it because his uh, young opponent here, Stefan Botticher, was hugely impressive in the first ride. He was. Noticed uh, nearly all the riders choose to use mirrored visors now to give as little information away to the competition as possible. As we pointed out, they can ride looking backwards, and if they just noticed that somebody was looking off to the side, that might be an opportunity to take and catch them by surprise. So every little detail thought about. Sprint competition is all about gaining the psychological uh, upper hand, and that's exactly what Botticher has done. Uh, so Chris Hoy was saying before the key 
wasn't the, uh, the small errors he made in positioning. The winning move for uh, the young German. Rottiger was keeping his height and not taking his foot off the gas, no matter what the directional changes were. And that's what made the difference in the end. He never gave away his speed. He kept his height. So when the last charge came, he had full advantage of the banking. And of course, backing up now in the second ride, I suppose really you should favour the younger athlete. He's got the the smaller build, so he won't be carrying as much lacking either. Two to go. Forstman is a, a very experienced campaigner. It's not going to be easy for Botticher, that's for sure. But he was so impressive in race one. We've got one and a half laps to sort this out. Are we going to go to three, or is the gold medal going to go to Botticher? Coming up to the line now, it'll be the bell, and it's Forsterman that's leading it out. Here we go then, Forsterman with a big injection of pace, he's leading it out. And Botticher has given himself quite a lot of daylight to work it. He's got it. Is he going to close up on Forsterman? It'll be a hugely he's impressive got it. performance. He's got it. Look at that, absolutely superb. 10.1 seconds <laughs> for the final 200 metres. That is Olympic standard times there. Take a note of the name, Stefan Botticher. The 20-year-old German wins the gold medal here and uh, he's going to take some stopping, believe me, when he gets to the World Championships. Jason Kenny versus Botticher, that would be a mouth-watering final. Have another look at this, Chris. It just makes it look so easy. Getting loads of victory salutes at the moment. But Forsterman did everything he felt was correct to his advantage, leading it out, but it just wasn't enough. And it was Botticher. Well, I'm at, just having a canter almost. I'm just having a quick Here flip through the uh, the times they set at the Olympic Games. I think that was the fa a faster match sprint than anything that we saw at the games. Yeah, look at this though now. Incredible acceleration. I could see it in the back straight. It wasn't the distance; it was the closing speed that was impressive. And you could see, with uh, three quarters of a lap to go, the speed difference was such that uh, he was going to cover that distance oh. with comfort. And it, by the time they crossed the line, he was already putting his hands onto the uh, onto the tops there. Must have given Forstam at 15 to 20 metres there. He was so confident, he knew he could close down. And obviously aiming at the wheel is the incentive as well, isn't it? Well, I reckon maybe 30% less energy to go the same speed when you've uh, got that slipstream, you've got that hole in the air to aim at, and it makes a big difference. But if you, the timing, the distance is so, so important. You need to pass in the right place. And he waited all the way to the home straight to do it. As the result confirmed, the winner of the gold medal is Stefan Botticher of Germany.